Hello, welcome back. Bruce with DIY Homestead Projects. Well, today is Saturday. It's Memorial Day weekend. And already, you know, several hours of being awake, I can't help but think about those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for the freedom that we enjoy in this country. Our freedom is, is what makes us who we are here in the United States of America. So let's be thankful for those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. I'm thinking before I start the modifications to the Harbor Freight 90 amp flux core welder, I wanted to do a couple of live video shots so that you can also hear how the uh, welder sounds. The, the sound has quite a bit to do with the differences between a good weld and a poor weld. At least you can kind of hear the difference. I'm going to run a couple of beads down this piece of scrap steel. I think this is maybe, oh it might be an eighth of an inch, maybe just a little bit less. I'm going to try to run a couple of beads and I wanted to show before I brush off the slag, I also want this for my own video record of the before and after on the modification. So let me get these cameras set up and see if I can't run a bead or two and we'll see what happens. I ran those two beads with the setting of minimum and a wire speed of four and a half. Mine only has minimum, maximum, and then a wire speed between zero and ten. And let me show you the slag this section right in here and then there's a couple of sections on this one that the slag is not completely covering the weld my thought is that's probably one of the problems with the Harbor Freight wire but it could also have to do with the fact that it's AC but I wanted to show you what the welds look like before I clean off the slag. So let me get these cleaned off and then we'll come back and look at them. Okay, this time I used a grinder with a wire wheel on it to clean them and it polished them up, polished up the welds kind of nice. Those those two for me actually actually aren't too bad. I must have the settings just about right for this thickness of steel. Right here on the end of this one you can see some porosity, a couple of little wormhole bubbles. But other than that, I mean, they they look fairly decent. Of course, the bead's not uniform or anything because I need pra a lot of practice. But the weld itself looks like it's sunk down in there pretty well. And uh, the edges look nice, no undercut or anything like that. I'm going to run another bead or two just for the record so I can get it on video and have a good sample to compare it to
with a different thickness of metal. That's still off. This. Went with a different thickness of metal welding these two pieces together. Now these are eighth of an inch. Just a couple of these little scrap things I had laying around. And once I finally got it adjusted, it seemed like it did a pretty good weld, but it's still not much flux coating on top of that. Now maybe, maybe it's the wire, maybe it's me, maybe it's the AC. Let me clean that up and then we'll look at it. Actually, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't look too awful bad. That was on max and four on the wire speed. Max setting and four. Cleaned up pretty decent. I mean, I still need to work on consistency with, with speed as I come across. That's where I started and it's terrible. See, it wasn't nearly hot enough to begin with. Didn't even, uh, didn't even adhere to the uh, base metal there. I'm going to do one more now that I think I have the settings pretty close to where I think they should be. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to run a bead right down the center on this side. I'm going to do my very best to make the best bead down the center of that that I possibly can with the settings that I've got on the machine right now. And uh, we'll see we'll see what that does. Oh, but I don't I don't know if you can see it on the uh, screen or not, but you see all the little BBs down in there? That's that's common with flux core, especially with the uh, Harbor Freight welder and the stock wire. I'm hoping to eliminate some of that. Now, I knocked a bunch of them off there with that wire wheel when I was cleaning it up, but it's very spattery welding which I'm okay with that, but I'd like to reduce that a little bit if it's possible. Another thing to note, I just had that piece of metal sitting on top of this other one where the ground clamp was, but in this case, I've got it connected to a set of vice grips just to hold the piece. And then I'm gonna hook my ground clamp just like that to the vice grips, so that's, you want the ground clamp as close to the work as possible, is what I understand. So we'll see if that uh, helps anything. Now I do have a Harbor Freight welding table that I'm going to be doing a video on here soon. I need to get it out and get it put together, but currently I'm just using this rigged up mess. <laughs> I'm also trying to keep my face back and away from all the smoke. You don't want to be right over the top if you can help it. That's easier said than done when you're trying to see what you're doing. You want to be right down in there, but that's not how you want it. You want to be out of way so you're not breathing that smoke if it's possible. So we'll see if I can do that this time. Having a fan, I may I may set up a fan in the future too. Having a fan set up to where it'll blow that smoke away from you, which will help out a bunch. And you can do that with this flux core. You can't do that too well with a with a MIG with the gas, but you don't have near the smoke to deal with in that case. So. Terrible. Had my face in there again too. Yeah, pretty wiggly. Well, we'll let you look at it. And I was going too fast. Missed spots, off course, all kinds of troubles with that. I'm gonna clean it up and try to run another bead down it again. I mean, it does look better cleaned up, but it's it's a terrible weld. And this wire is only suited for a single pass. So if I was welding something that mattered, doing a second pass would not be allowed with this particular wire. But I'm going to do it anyway for practice since this is just practice. So let's set up and see what happens.
I went much slower and this time I kind of did the cursive E method where I'm tying the two pieces in together because there was quite a bit of a gap that last inch looks pretty decent right there but it's real hot so let me get it cleaned up and we'll come back and look at it all right there's a look at it after I cleaned it up I mean it's that's these are some of the best welds I've been able to do so far with this machine so uh, not too bad but notice how much thicker this metal is this is eighth inch and it just uh, to me is much easier than the super super thin but you see all the spatter all the BBs on the sides that's because of the AC and and flux core so I'm hoping to be able to eliminate some of that let's look at this one this one here is the best one I did today and if you get the right angle on it you can kind of see the shininess Sorry about the lawnmowers, guys. You can see uh, it's pretty consistent. Not real straight, but the, the last half was pretty straight. I could see the edge of the, the metal. That was the best one. That one's mediocre. And that one's mediocre. I mean, I think I could tack something together with it. Let me show you the wire brush I'm using to clean these this thing I picked it up at Harbor Freight it's a four and a half inch twisted wire brush and this thing is wicked man make sure you wear make sure you wear eye protection use your welding shield or some safety glasses or something because pieces of wire come flying off of that thing and little BBs off your weld but boy it cleans them up nice beats the heck out of the out of the hand brush the hand brush is okay, but this one actually polishes the weld. This one was actually a pretty decent weld here too on the back. Not not bad. So anyway guys, hopefully that'll not only for myself, but give you an idea of what this welder is capable of. It's a capable welder it'll do it'll do the job in the right hands you know I mean nothing building bridges or anything like that but just hobby stuff around the house and it's fun to play around with this particular welder is a is a transformer welder I prefer an inverter welder knowing what I know now I, I had no clue when I bought this machine about this but uh, they, they make inverter welders and I can't really explain the difference I don't know enough about the two but I do know that the inverter weller welders it's kind of what everybody's going to these days much smaller more efficient as far as electricity and uh, I think they just do I mean it's just kind of the thing so there's one uh, if I if I didn't already have this machine that I would buy it's the century by Lincoln I believe sold by Northern for a, uh, Northern Tools and it is the FC 90 which is a true uh, DC welder for about 200 bucks so if you're looking to get one if I was to do it over again and who am I right I'm no experienced person but I've done a lot of research if it were me and I was to just start from the fresh looking for a decent starter welder I think that's probably the one that I would buy you wouldn't have to do the DC conversion but I'm gonna try to see what I can get out of this one after I do a DC conversion so the next videos I'm gonna be digging into it and starting to work on putting the parts together and or putting the parts in the machine and we'll go from there hope you guys enjoyed the video again happy Memorial Day thank you to all the uh, veterans who have given the ultimate sacrifice for this country so we can enjoy our freedom and we'll see you guys on the next video